Welcome. Welcome to Art Yourself Studio. And I'd like to just tell you what you're going to need today. You need your paints and you're going to need your, you'll need some salt. You'll need probably your bleed proof white if you have it. If you don't have it, don't worry. You'll need a little piece of tape, blue painter's tape. Uh, a spray bottle, which is a lot of water, so I'm going to use this little spray mister. And the three sizes that we usually use, actually I have four, six is my favorite. Then I have an eight and a um, nine. And then I have a three here for little details. We are, as you can see, we're going to paint the night sky. And what I, what I have here is uh, a picture of this beautiful night sky somebody asked me in in the ask Ginny how to do um, watercolor night skies so i'm going to show you a couple pictures of here's another picture and uh just pulled out some i just did a google search did a google search on night skies and then i saved them into a file or a folder and then now I can pull them back up when it's time when I want to do it. And here's another beautiful one. And what we're going to notice is the colors that are in these um, night skies. You please pick what colors you like. I am recommending uh, four, co uh, yeah, three colors, four colors. And I would like to let's say mix and match. So I'm going to use two two of these uh, pictures in one of the drawings and then we'll have fun with the other and we're, we're going to do two paintings uh let me move this out of the way the reason why is i've always been a stickler not stickler because that sounds really strict but i've always felt it really important that you have two paintings that you're painting at the same time so one can dry while you're waiting for the other one Ah, one can dry while you're painting on the other one. Sorry, I was trying to do too many things, multitasking. Uh, okay, so welcome. I'm glad you're here. Give me a thumbs up. Let me know you're here. I'll see if you have any questions or comments. I'm here. I can answer them. Do my best. We're just going to have some fun today talking about materials, paper. I have two, two sides of my, uh, I, I got a new little watercolor book for these mini lessons. You may want one. You don't have to. These are postcard size. You can paint postcards and then mail it off to people. Um, you'll need a little mini water and bleed proof white. If you don't have it, don't worry. You'll need some salt, your paper towel. I've got my dirty water, clean water, my favorite brushes, and my colors over here. So start by writing. Um, these are called Night Sky 1 and Night Sky 2 and start by writing the date you want to kind of date your book you can buy these books this one is um artisto 30 watercolor sheets uh 140 pound which is really important because that takes a lot of water it'll hold the water for you i also taped it off because i'm doing like a little vignette so that you can do it along with me we're going to paint two so here we go grab your biggest brush uh, before we do it, this one I want to do this night sky. And I'm doing this one first because it needs to dry when we do our last layer. So I took a piece of paper, a piece of tape, and just taped a little circle. It could be better than that. It's going to be good for right now. Um, you, if you have some tape, whatever you have, just go right ahead and just use it. Don't worry about it being perfectly round. So um, I have three colors picked. I'll show you. You, I'm going to pick, uh, I see in here a really pretty, a really pretty blue. And I, I dirty water, wash it off, clean water. And this one is a phthalo blue. And I, I don't want you to uh, be stuck on the colors. I think that's really pretty blue. If you have it, great. If you don't, just pick the color you like. Then I have a little violet here. I'm just going to show you what it looks like. 
or violet. And then clean your brush off, dirty clean water and an indigo. An indigo for me, when I think of indigo, I think of um, a blue, like your blue jeans. So indigo blue is, is a blue jean blue. Okay, that's not primed enough. Let me try this one. Uh, I like to prime my colors first. I have a dropper of water or I have a spray bottle this big just to spray the paint. Um, sometimes you have to do it throughout. Uh, I do recommend spraying all your colors so that if you want to dip into some, it helps with your creativity. You're not locked into certain colors. So spray all your colors, get them all primed and ready to go, even if you don't think you're going to use it. Uh, here we go. I'm going to dip this. That's the blue. So let me clean this out. I want to give an indigo. And I have another blue called Lu Lunar Blue. I think it's by Daniel Smith. I love Daniel Smith paints. This one also works as uh, like an indigo. It's a little bit more, you can look at it. You can see it's a little darker, but I, I'm happy with it. I think you'll like it. Um, okay, so let me put it on my paper. I just made a little pile. Uh, I could have a little more color to it. So we've, we're talking consistencies. This is a, a milky consistency. So it feels like it's as thick as like what milk would be. This is a really good one for backgrounds. And most backgrounds, you're going to want to uh, get the background wet on wet for this technique. It's gonna be a wet on wet. So use your little spray bottle. Um, let me know if you're here, tell me where you're from. Tell me what you, any questions you have. So. Uh, if you're painting along with me, if I'm going too fast, give me a, a hands up and slow down because I know where I'm going with this, but you don't necessarily, I haven't told you. Uh, water, take your biggest brush and spread that water out. This is our wet on wet technique. This is nice and taped down. It's gonna give us a nice border on our painting. Wet on wet. So there's a couple couple thoughts here. If you lift it up, you can see that there are a couple puddles of water. If you want it to cool and make uh, wet on wet blooms, they call it, you can leave your puddles in. Or if you just want to leave it, leave it so that they it it's the paper's moist and it'll slowly move, it won't bloom on you. That's how I prefer to paint. Some artists wet the paper both sides. Some artists just wet the paper one side. I want you to play. I encourage you to play. There's no right or wrong way. It's it's only up to you. It's how you decide you want to do it. So um, you're not you're not wrong. All right. So in this picture, I have I, I I have my moon reversed, and the reason for that is because I I didn't want it over on this side. So just imagine a reverse of it. The moon, this corner is darker. So I'm gonna grab this, that blue, that the phthalo blue and mix a little bit in with this indigo blue and just drop it in. And you'll see how, how it's just spreading around. Now that's pretty watery. And I see the picture as having a little more rich color in there, darker. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop another and please go ahead and do that. I'm holding this paper down because it's in my book and it's lifting a little bit. That's fine, don't worry, that's fine. Okay, so that's my dark corner. I'm gonna grab some water on this brush and put water next to it and watch how you can pull that out. And as you're pulling it out, it lightens up the sky so that it's not all dark. That keeps your darks in the corner. Lightening it up, it's damp, so um, it's glistening. So it's not going to dry up on you. So you're not going to get the blooms just yet. Cleaning my brush off, dirty water, then clean water. And I like to tap it in here to get some of that water out. And now I'm going to grab that violet. And I liked, I thought the violet was pretty in this bottom part. So I'm just tapping it in. kind of meet, meeting up there. I know my tree is going to be here, so I'm tapping it in, meeting up there, 
this is wet on wet there's a little space in between the two so i'm going to just tap some water in between oops let me clean that brush off i'd love you to try it give me a um, comment let me know how you're you're doing with it if you see this awesome okay so here we go there we i'm gonna pull that out i'm not going to introduce any um warm colors in this because it will get a little muddy so i'm gonna let that we're gonna let that dry the indigo and the blue i mixed together and then i put the violet in and now i'm gonna just let that dry i'm happy with that i would like to get some of those spots in there so the first way to put the spots in are to is first way is to drop some salt on there and while we're letting that salt do its thing we're going to come over here and i'm going to show you a different picture and it's going to be this one similar colors let me see if this one's better any of them are going to be beautiful but this is going to be one that you can use anytime for any of your backgrounds look how pretty that is it's just nice pretty it's dark i'll probably because i like the blue add a little blue you can add whatever colors you want to add um we're going to do the same thing we're going to get our paper wet and let's keep it sloppy wet let's keep the puddles in there and uh so you that so then you experience both types there we go yeah gonna keep it really puddly you can see the puddles on there i don't know if you can see it in your see how it's glistening i'm gonna have a couple more puddles I'm just gonna drop them in okay so there'll be a puddle kind of where that center is and when you're painting watercolor you want to start with your this particular um, activity you want to start with your light color because it's hard to go light over dark obviously on watercolor it's the opposite of acrylic and oil so we want to start with our light color and i see that purple in the middle and so i'm just watch that isn't that fun see how it just spreads out i'm just going to drop it in to give it a little of the angle so that it's an interesting angle of the sky look how pretty this is just a simple wet on wet technique uh, i want you to have fun with it well, because we're letting this dry we're having fun painting here and we're just experimenting and very simple so there's the purple and then you've got your indigo please feel free to use any blue that you want to do um the I, I have the same colors over here so indigo i'd like that indigo to be a little rich so i'm going to add some of my phthalo blue to it i like that the violet is this right here what i did i just set that in i'm kind of um doing this now so that that has some time to dry and the blue i'm going to use a i saw the cerulean blue in the other one but this one's more of a darker blue so let's see what prussian blue would do prussian blue looks really close to the indigo blue okay so i see the next color is being this prussian blue so i'm tapping the paper still sloppy wet and i'm going to tap that prussian blue on the outside of the purple all the way around you hear the snoring that's my daughter's doggy you can tell her emma jane we heard your dog in class today <laughs> okay uh here we go i need a little more prussian blue a little more um uh amount on my palette so i can scoop up some more so that it'll bleed more into where i want it to go what's so fun about watercolor is it does have its own mind it'll do its its own thing you won't be able to tell it <laughs> what to do if you do less water you have a little more control but i kind of wanted to just see what would happen let's splatter a little bit and see what happens there how fun is that like just play and practice now grab for this background we're going to grab the blah 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 the indigo the indigo blue 
because it's dark around the edges. So we're going to just dark, darken those edges. There's a lot of water here. If you have too much water, I don't know if you can see it. There, it's pooling up in this end here. So I'm just going to tap my paper towel. Can, I don't know if you can see it over to the far right. Just tap, tapping the paper towel to absorb some of that water. There we go. Nice and easy. I would like it a little darker. So I'm just doing a little more color. It's still moving like a milk would move, a milky consistency would move, but I'm doing it darker. It wouldn't hurt to add a little bit of um, navy blue or really dark blue in here. You can do that too. So this is settling into the paper. It's it's smearing nicely. It's moving nicely. And if you are unable to find this, it'll be on YouTube. I have a YouTube channel. So you can look for it on YouTube. It's Art Yourself Studio. It'll be up uh, tomorrow or the next day. And you can rewatch it as many times as you want. I want you to play. If you have any uh, discoveries while you're doing this, please feel free to share them with me. I'm going to add some salt. See what that salt does. Just a little bit of salt to get that Milky Way movement. And then this is where the white's going to come in. This is, you, if you don't have it, don't worry. Don't go out and buy it. You don't need it. I like it. I use it a lot. It's a bleed, uh, PH Martin's bleed proof white. It's really nice when you're doing sky like this. So I'm going to just tap, put some on my brush and just tap it in. See how you get a little like a Milky Way. I'm laying it down directional so that it's, and I do see the, the, white all over this painting how fun is that that's night sky and that's it isn't that pretty just simple night sky any questions please write in the comments i don't see any comments yet but yeah write in the comments let me know what you think this is about dry so you can use a hair dryer i feel like the heat in the hair dryer and this is a feeling it's it's my gut. I don't know. I haven't tested the, the theory, but I feel like when you use a hair dryer, it makes it dry so fast and it dries it out and you, you lose some of your color. So I prefer to just let it dry on its own. Um, I see here it's really uh, simple. I'm going to go back. When I say simple, it's light, which is fine because on this picture, that's my son. I'm doing it in reverse. So the tree is going to be over here. So this right over here, this color could use a little more color. And since it's still a little damp, I'm just going to grab that blue that I liked and just tap it in the corner here. Um, when you have salt on your paper, you just want to be careful that you don't scoop up the salt with your brush because it will go to a place where you may not want it in the future on another part of your painting. Uh, so for right now, I'm, it's okay because this I'm darkening this up a little bit with that purple. I love those uh, feathery bleeds there. Yeah, I hope you have fun with this. Are you trying it with me? Let me know. Um, I can't really see if you guys are writing anything. Let me see, I'm gonna add, give myself a little, there we go, I just wrote to myself. So that's something I'll learn. I, I will see your comments after, but um, I just need to learn. If I could see your comments live, that would be great. Okay, so there it is. It's almost dry. I'm going to take the smaller brush. I like the six, and I'm gonna make a mixture of a really dark blue. I'm using these colors that I have already on the palette, but I wanna make a mixture of dark blue and black. I'm really, um, I'm only doing black just to give it some thickness and rich, but I really like when you make your own blacks. Um, make your own blacks using, let me add some green in here. You can use some green, you can use some red. Like when you make black, you can mix it up any way you want to. All these colors go into black really, really well. Okay.
So I want it to be pasty. I want it to be thicker. And because this is a little painting, I think I'm going to go to my little my little brush, which is uh, let's look at it. it's a three. Okay. I don't think I'm getting anything. Okay, so I'm grabbing that three, and I'm just rubbing my brush in it, just rubbing it through. It's not drippy. Let's test it. My paper's still a little wet, so I'm going to tap, tap, tap this in. This is that lower part of the the picture down here. It's a little bit of a mountain mountain range, but I love when you've got that black the other colors behind it. See how it's kind of light. It'll glow. And hopefully while I'm doing that, this will be drying for me to put that nice uh, thin tree in. I have a poetry class on tonight. If you can join us, please do. Mary Larson is teaching it. Oh, she does such a good job. Blackout poetry. I didn't know anything about it till she exposed us to it. Oh, I like this. Look at that nice little background. I see that you've got a little glare. I'm going to take my paper, my roll of tape, and lift it a little. There, so that you don't see the glare. Um, any questions? Oh, Laura, I love you. Of course, you're here. You're my bestie. <laughs> you're the best watercolorist I know. <laughs> Thank you so much. I see your comment. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, we used to do this before live, remember? I should invite you to do it with me. <laughs> Okay, so now I'm just going to add that nice tree, and I hope you're doing this with, with me, Laura. It's just a quick little one. If it bleeds out, that's okay, too. I'm just going to, I'm looking at the tree, and I'm looking at the shapes, and I like a, a, a thin branch going up, and then it kind of branches off. Can you hear Pickle snoring? Okay, so... I'm drawing these lines out, and if you skip a spot, that's okay too. What's so cool about this tree is that it's really spidery, and you can see, let's see if I can blow it up a little bit, you can see that it's really blurry like this, just like what we're painting. I see that some of mine is blending in, so I can go back over it because it's still wet. That's fine. I can go back over it later and define the lines more. But for right now, we'll just put in the, get the idea. And there we go. There's your night sky. Some people um, wanted me to do this. I have a thing where you can uh, ask me. You can write in the comments here. If you have anything you're working on and you're not sure how to do it or get there, please let me know. I'm happy to answer questions. And this is going to be fun. It'll be, as soon as it gets dry, we're going to um, pull that up. Now, I wish I didn't have that fear of, not fear, but I wish I didn't have that phobia of the hairdryer, because this would be a good time to use the hairdryer. That's okay. We're not rushing. We're, we're just having some fun. I see it's blending in, but I know when it's dry and I go back over it, I'll be, it'll be even more deeper. So let's go, while we're waiting a little bit for that to dry, let's go back to our night sky one and see how yours turned out. Is there anything you can do to improve it? And how does it, ask yourself, how does it, um, how does it look to you? Did it give you the feeling you wanted? I, I, I want to add a little more of this violet in here. I want to get a little bit more, uh, not the whole thing, but patches of it to be a little darker to get a little richer in color. And take a picture of it and look at it um, on your phone and see if it gives you the effect that you wanted. Yeah, I like that. I might, I might just put some water now on that to blend it out. You can hold your book and turn it if you want. I bought these books on, on, um, on Amazon. They came in a day. Because my other book from last time we were doing these lives is fall. So there you go. I think that gives it some rich. I like that when the paper's wet, it'll still move and still blend. So that's the wet on wet technique. So when you do something in, in wet and wet, just know that it'll still um, move even after you're finished. 
Okay, I think we're getting close to finished. Anybody have any questions or let me know. I'm gonna go ahead and dig in some of this. When this is dry, we'll go back through and add another layer on top of that to clarify the branches. I will include a picture in here after this is finished and dried. I will include a picture on the in the comments so that you can see it. I'm also going to now take off this top part is dry. So I'm going to take off my tape and, and slowly with this blue tape, you slowly take it off sideways. Look at that. Look at our moon. Now let's look. This is for lefties, right, Laura? Putting putting this, <laughs> we're painting it the other way. That's how our lefty brain works. I'm going to make this smaller. Now that moon looks different than my moon. I'm going to zoom in pull it down. That moon has, it's not just pure white, right? So we want to add a little bit of color to it. And I'm not going to go black, but I will take my darkest blue mixture that I use down here and really water it out. Really lots of lots of lots of water. Well, when I say lots of water, just make it thin. I don't want it to be watery, but I want it to be thin. And then you just kind of make a shape. So in um in the northern hemisphere, we call it the man on the moon. And in the southern hemisphere, we call it the bunny on the moon. So uh, I learned that from my Australia friends. So you can actually take a picture of the moon and the man on the moon and make it look like a man on the moon. Or you can make it look like a bunny on the moon. The way the, the southern hemisphere sees the moon, it's, it's a different um, different angle. So it looks like a bunny. But in your painting, you can you can do that if you want. And there you go, that's it. Still a little white, maybe when it's dry, I might do a little light wash over it just to take out some of that white. But there we go, we're finished for today. Nice job, thank you for joining me. Um, please include your pictures in the comments so that we all can see it, I'd love that. And um, if you have something you want me to paint next week, I'll also write that in the comment and I will um, accommodate. I make my lesson plans according to what your wishes are and what you would like to learn. So um, that helps me. And um, I'm going to say bye for now.